Okay, so a lot of new students to algebra will tend to solve an equation like this kind of using a more difficult or more uh, kind of a harder way to uh, solve this equation. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but with experience, there is much, much easier techniques and a much faster approach in order to solve an equation like this. So let's see how well you can solve this equation. So we have 1 half times x plus 1 is equal to 3x. And again, uh, it's okay if you use your calculator, but really that's not going to help you uh, per se in terms of saving time. But uh, anyways, if you can solve for x, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show the correct answer here in just one second. And then I'm going to show you two approaches uh, to solve this equation. All right, I'll kind of take a harder, more difficult path which is pretty typical for uh, newer students. And then I'm gonna show you a much more efficient direct approach to solve an equation like this. And that is really kind of uh, the second approach is kind of the way you want to evolve, uh, have your skills evolve because you don't want to, uh, you know, always do things in a more difficult kind of way. It just takes time and it's just, you know, there's a lot more opportunities to make errors. But again, I'll show you both of those techniques and the correct answer in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so 1 half times x plus 1, of course this is in parentheses, equal to 3x. What is x equal to? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The answer is x is equal to 1 fifth. All right, so even if you took a longer path or you know you struggle with this, it doesn't make a difference. You were able to solve this and that is fantastic. Matter of fact, that is the cause for celebration. So let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and a plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic algebraic linear equations. I mean, they won't even understand what you're telling them. They'll be like, wow, you must be a math genius and say, yes, I, uh, I am. Um, uh, you know, I watch that guy on YouTube every day. I don't know what his name is, but he teaches me a lot of stuff. All right, so all jokes aside, even if you didn't get this uh, thing correct, no big deal. And if you did do this right, it's possible that you may have taken a longer path. All right. So I'm going to show you the more direct path here. And uh, let's go ahead and get started by kind of uh, reviewing real quick what type of equation we're dealing with. All right. So it's important that you understand what type of equations you are dealing with in algebra because there's all different sorts of equations. Okay. And each type of equation. Uh, requires a different technique and method. The type of equation we're dealing with here is what we call a linear equation, all right? Now, why it, uh, it is a linear equation, uh, we'll kind of say that for another video, but real quick, basically we have one variable to the first power, okay? So if you have a variable to the second power, something like this, this type of equation would not be a linear, this would be quadratic and so forth. So in algebra, you need to understand or recognize what type of equation you are dealing with. Now, when it comes to linear equations, uh, we want to kind of keep some big picture um, uh, ideas in mind. And the first one is we need to get all of our variable terms to the left and all of our number, uh, number terms to the right-hand side of the equation. I'll show you what I'm talking about as we get going through the steps here. And another thing, in all equations, in all of algebra, uh, we need to keep in mind that an equation symbol like this is a balance scale, okay? So you can kind of think of it as a balance scale, a teeter-totter or a seesaw, uh, if you will. And whatever we do to one side of the equation, if we want to add something to one side of the equation, no problem, but you got to add the exact same thing to the other side. So whatever you do to one side of the equation, we must do the exact same thing to the other side of the equation. So these are just two big concepts that you kind of want to be keeping in mind as you go through the steps to solve this equation. All right, so let's go ahead and get into um, the actual solution here. And I'm going to take a more difficult path, which would be pretty uh, typical of newer students. Nothing wrong with this. Again, 
uh, because you know students are just doing the best they can. But with experience, you don't want to solve an equation like this. Okay, so the first things first uh, here we have an x plus one. We have this thing in parentheses, right? We have a variable inside parentheses. Anytime you see parentheses in algebra and a number outside of the parentheses, that's an indication that we must apply something called the, uh, the distributive property, okay? Now, you know, I am talking about a lot of different type of things. If you're like already kind of lost here, you're like, I just need to even solve equations more basic than this. Well, uh, let me give you a couple quick suggestions before we get started. One, you can check out my pre-algebra course. I'll leave that link in the description below. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. You want to check out one-step equations and uh, the uh, distributive property, okay? But for those of you that know what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and use it. So that's our first step, okay? When you have a number outside of parentheses in an equation, you want to use uh, the, the distributive property uh, to simplify this expression. So it's going to be 1 half times x which of course is one half X and then one half times one, which is one half. And that is equal to three X. So that's our first move. And uh, if you took that as your first move to solve this equation, that's very good. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little trick here, okay? Now, uh, a lot of you would just continue to work the equation like, oh, I have my variable here. Uh, I have a variable term on the left-hand side and a variable term on the right-hand side. So you're saying, well, that YouTube guy told me to move all the variables on the left and all the numbers on the right. So if that's the case right here, I would actually have to uh, do two things to this equation. I would have to move the 3x over to link up with this 1 half x, and then I would have to move this 1 half over to the other side. Well, we can use a little trick or a little hack, if you will. And you need to keep in mind that when you have an equation, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So you could write this equation as the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. It's not going to break the equation. And sometimes it's advantageous to switch the sides of the equation. Now, it's not necessary because it's typically, uh, typically we want our variables to the left. Okay, you could keep your variables to the right, but that tends to confuse a lot of students, especially when they're used to having their variables on the left-hand side of the equation. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna write this uh, equation. I'm just gonna flip-flop the sides. So instead of 1 half x plus 1 half is equal to 3x, I'm gonna write it, uh, this as 3x is equal to all of this stuff, 1 half x plus 1 half on the other side. Okay, so mathematically, uh, this is equivalent, but there's a great advantage to writing your equation this way, okay? Now, you don't have to do this, but uh, when you do this, you're like, you got your variables to the left, my number now is to the right-hand side. So all I have to do is take this one step and move this one half x to uh, get all my variable terms to the left. My number is already on the right. So instead of making two steps here, all I have to do is one step. Okay, so you know, you want to, you know, with experience, you'll see these little opportunities. Uh, but, anyways, if you didn't do that, no big deal. Let's continue on with kind of the more difficult path. All right, so now what we need to do is we want to move our variable terms, all of our uh, variable terms to the left. So we're gonna to have to move this one half x, get rid of it on the right hand side and put it on the left hand side. So we can, the way to do that is that we're gonna subtract a one half x from this side. We're gonna add a negative one half x. Remember, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do that to the exact same side. So we're going to add a negative one half x to, uh, to both sides of the equation. All right, so you can see the format that I'm using here. This is the format that I'm gonna suggest that you would use. And at this point, what you want to do is kind of add down in a column manner, okay? So 3 half x minus 1 half x. If I said, hey, you have 3, and we're going to take away 1 half from 3, what would you have? Well, hopefully you could see, oh, you just have 2 and 1 half. So uh, notice I didn't do anything fancy here with fractions. I just said, oh, okay, 3 take away 1 half uh, is 2 and 1 half x, okay? And then here, 1 half x minus 1 half x is 0. And then this 1 half plus nothing is uh, just 1 half. So now I'm down to a one-step equation. So we have 2 and 1 half x is equal to 1 half. All right, so at this point, we do want to convert uh, or change this mixed number fraction into an improper fraction, okay? 
uh, that would be the next uh, move. Um, some of you might say, well, shouldn't I just divide both sides of the equation by two and one half? Yeah, you could do that. But, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, you're still going to have to change this mixed number fraction to an improper fraction. Remember how we do that? Two times two is four plus one is five. So this is going to be five halves X. Okay, so instead of two and one half X, we're going to write this as five, uh, uh, five halves X is equal to one half. Now, to solve for x, you might be thinking, well, when I have an equation like 2x is equal to 10, I have a number in front of the x, what I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by this number, this coefficient. So you might be saying, well, don't I need to divide both sides of the equation by 5 halves? Well, yes, you could do that. Again, this is the, the longer way, and that will this will give us the solution, but again, this is, you know, I'm kind of showing you the more difficult path. But let's go ahead and just uh, follow through. So we have 5 halves x uh, to get x by itself. We're going to divide both sides by 5 halves. So 1 half divided by 5 halves. Let's go ahead and clean up this fraction problem. So that's, again, 1 half divided by 5 halves. So x is going to be equal to 1 half divided by 5 halves again. And so we're going to write this as a multiplication problem. So hopefully you're up to speed on your fractions. We have x is equal to 1 half times, right? We're going to go from division to multiplication by flipping the fraction to the right. So that's 2 fifths. So how do we multiply fractions? Easy. We just simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. And you can see these twos cross cancel. We'll end up with uh, 2 over 10, which is 1 fifth. Or you can just see that our answer, because these factors here will cross cancel, is one fifth. Okay, so this is how we, um, uh, you know, solve the equation, and this is by far, you know, the more, you know, longer, more arduous way. And this is not the approach that you want to take as you gain more experience in algebra. All right, so I'm going to show you a much easier way and the way you want to actually do these problems, uh, you know, when there's fractions involved in the equation. So I'm going to show you that right now. But first, I'm going to show you this. Okay which is a reminder for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification button. This really does help me tremendously. It helps that YouTube algorithm. It helps me reach as many people as possible. There is such a dire need uh, for, uh, first of all, there's a major teacher shortage and a, not a lot of people you know, to teach at this, well, let's say at the high school or college level, um, you know, you need a degree in mathematics. Now, you don't need a degree in mathematics. Uh, you know, I have a degree and a master's degree, but you don't need a degree to kind of like understand and learn algebra or maybe even teach algebra. But great teachers have a lot of education and there is a shortage of them. Okay. And for me, I feel compelled to try to reach as many people as possible. And I want to try to provide clear and understandable math instruction. So when you subscribe, it really does uh, help me reach more people. And if you're new to my channel, just as a reminder, I have 2,000 plus uh, math videos from basic math to advanced math and everything in between. So check out all that content. I made it for you. All right. So back to the prom. So here is our situation. Okay. We have one half times X plus one is equal to three X. Now, again, I told you uh, previously that we have a situation where you have a number outside of the parentheses. Our first thing, our first kind of like um, uh, instinct is to say, oh, this, uh, this is the distributive property situation you want to kind of multiply in. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. However, if you start doing that here, it's going to take you on the path of uh, the long approach, if you will. So what I want you to notice is when you have fractions in uh, in an equation to get rid of the fractions. Okay, we can just clear the fractions away. So we kind of really reduce uh, working with fractions and that's going to just save you a lot of time and effort. Okay, it's just going to be a cleaner, more direct approach. And the way to do that is to multiply the entire equation uh, by the lowest common denominator. So notice here I have this one half written with this angle fraction bar. Uh, I'm going to suggest too that you write your fractions with a horizontal fraction bar. So let's just kind of see this more clearly. This is one half times this. So I'll just kind of be very explicit here. I have one half times x plus one. Now I'm writing this as a fraction. So we can, this is just over one. So we can understand what the lowest common denominator is x three x. If I want to think of it as a fraction, just put it over one. Okay. All right, so now we're looking at the denominators here. So this is two, one, and one. So what is the lowest common denominator? Well, the LCD, 
out of all these denominators is 2. So if I multiply this entire equation by 2, I'm going to clear away the fractions and everything's just going to be so much easier. This is the way you want to approach equations, the linear equations or other type of um, algebraic expressions, uh, especially equations, when there's fractions involved, just get rid of them right up front by multiplying everything by the lowest common denominator. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to multiply both sides by the LCD. Again, 2 is the LCD. So when I do that, this is 2 times 1 half times x plus 1 is equal to uh, 3x times 2. These 2's are going to go away. 2 over 1 times 1 half is 1. So I'm just left with this, x plus 1, and then 3x times 2 will give me 6x. So let's go ahead and see that here. Okay, so this is really our first step, right? I'm not even dealing, dealing with any fractions. I just kind of figured out what the LCD is. And now I'm down to this lovely equation right here. x plus 1 is equal to 6x. And we'll make it even easier on ourselves. I'll kind of uh, you know, show you another example of switching um, the size of the equation. So I'm going to move the 6x over here x plus 1 on the other side, okay, you don't have to do this, but it's just going to save you time, because right here, if you want to move the variables to the left, you're going to have to move this 6x, and then the numbers to the right, so if we flip-flop this equation, all we have to do here is simply move the x over, and, you know, we're almost done, right, so let's go ahead and move that x over by subtracting x from both sides of the equation, and then we'll add down in a column manner, so 6x minus x is 5x, x minus x is 0, and then uh, 1 plus nothing is 1. And now look, I'm almost done. I have 5x is equal to 1. So how do I solve 4x? Easy. Just simply uh, divide both sides of the equation by 5. So x is equal to 1 fifth. All right, so much, much easier. I didn't have to think about fractions other than the LCD. And this is the approach you want to take. Again, you know, you do need to... Um, you know, no, one is it appropriate or advantageous to use the distributive property. Okay, of course, there'll be times when you need to do that. But in a problem like this, you know, the only way you're going to get better at, you know, finding the more efficient direct path is practice. Okay, you, you know, nothing makes up with ex um, for experience. You can't look at a problem, you know, like me do, doing this equation and be like, oh, okay, I get what he's understand. You know, I understand what he's saying. Uh, you know, da, 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 I, I'll remember this. No, you won't really remember this unless you practice. There's a huge difference between you watching me, you know, uh, you know, do an equation versus you actually being able to do it. Okay, now, I've pretty much given you the knowledge, but you're not going to get good at this unless you practice. It's an absolute must uh, to, um, you know, if you want to prove in mathematics. But uh, anyways, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.